Good morning. It is a Monday morning and I am not feeling overly motivated. I, well, not that I ever really am because that's not a thing that is a, overall a characteristic I have, but um, I was thinking I would try a different type of video instead of more Instead of a tutorial or project-based video that's going to instruct, I guess, I um, thought I would do more of like a craft vlog, um, that type of video, because I think those can also be really enjoyable. Um, so here I am. It's Tegan, if you haven't been to my channel for a while. That's me, I'm Tegan. And, um, this is my little, currently my little sewing corner. The last time I think I put up a video, I was in a different location in my home. I had a whole room. I no longer do as my, one of my children now has their own room, which is great for them. Um, and in the works right now, I have a camper that I'm trying to convert into my own sewing space and studio, which is exciting, but a lot of work and uh, physically exhausting mentally and emo mentally emotionally and physically exhausting I guess it would be what I would say that is and um winter kind of put that on halt it's March it's starting to think I'm starting to think more about it again knowing that um that project can start up again soon um, I'm thinking about things I may want to delegate or maybe not so um anyway I thought right now I would maybe tidy up my sewing corner and show you guys some of the things that I have going on in the sewing corner. Um, it's a complete disaster uh, and I have so many projects that some are just I've thought of and some are things I've even gathered supplies for, some are in the works. Um, I thought I would share those with you guys. Maybe you'll find it interesting and uh, yeah, kind of just do a little update, I guess, a uh, crafting sewing update. So I'm going to take a drink of my tea and just be, make myself a cup of tea. Um, yeah. I, first thing, I guess, and one of the number one things on my to-do list is I have, but it's just not, for me, it's not fun sewing. I am almost completely done with this uh, shirt, which I'm very pleased with. I took a class last year, a garment, it's called Garment Perfection, and I learned so much about making clothing that I never learned because that was not a thing my generation did um, or learned in schools or anything like that. And so um, as a elder millennial, I would call that my generation. Um, and the only thing left now is to sew on the buttons. I even have the buttonholes in the shirt. I just need to finish sewing on buttons. I have two sewn on, or no, I have three sewn on. So I have one, two, three, four, five with the cuffs more to do. It has a really great fit because that was one thing that was really great about this class I took. Um, the person was super knowledgeable about sewing and, and garments and tailoring, and she knew exactly how to alter a pattern to fit my body. So she measured my body and like could compensate for any sort of anything. It was just, she was really, really good. Uh, the class was Garment Perfection. It was offered at the Fields Fabric in Holland. Um, if that's the type of thing you're interested in, if you're, if you live in Michigan, West Michigan, I would definitely recommend it. Um, it was really helpful. And so anyway, I just have those buttons to sew on. So that's one of my projects and it's been sitting out forever because I don't know what to do with it because I want to get it done. And like the needle is even laying there with thread in it. Like, what am I doing? I just, but the second I put a needle in my pin cushion, I lose track of it a hundred percent. So I just need to get that done so I can wear it to work. And I promised myself if I get it done that I can start another shirt or maybe even take the class again. Cause it was just super helpful. I think I'd learn a lot even the second time around. Um, and people with that type of like knowledge firsthand, like it's just a really valuable thing. Um, so that is one thing I have there. I'll pile that on top of other clothes that actually just need to go upstairs to my closet, but often get dumped in my craft area, uh, either by myself or my family, because no one wants to go upstairs. 
So yeah, I have charging station underneath my iPad, um, which means that I actually, at the moment, can't even operate half of this stuff. My iron is not plugged in, my sewing machine is not plugged in, and my uh, other task light is not plugged in. Because that's what happens, right? You just play, I have one outlet available to me, and yeah. Um, I have, I have a couple different hand projects, hand sewing projects, besides obviously sewing on buttons with a hand sewing project. At least for me, I think theoretically you can do that on a machine, but for me, it just makes sense to do that by hand. Not that I'm overly skilled at that, but um, I have a couple different hand sewing projects going on. I have been, this is my little yo-yo sewing kit. It's a, just a clear plastic uh, container, but I put circles in there. I think that my circles are around three inch. I just have a ribbon container or ribbon spool, old ribbon spool that I always use to trace scrap fabric. Um, these are all purple because I originally, I have a project that I was originally planning on using purple yo-yos for. I have since completely switched the idea of that project and don't actually have a need for purple yo-yos, but I keep, but it's still a nice little hand sewing project to take on the go that I find less stressful than my other hand sewing project. Um, so that is one thing and I need to reunite this actually with the rest of my yo-yo supplies, which is actually in a completely different space or um, just find a good spot to put it down here. Let's see if I can do that. That would be fantastic. Uh, but anyway, my other hand sewing project that I have going on, um, and I have had going on for a really long time, is I have an English paper piecing project in this bag. Um, and it's my first English paper piecing project and I really enjoy the English paper piecing. However, I'm just super slow. So this is the kit that, this is the main part of the kit when I'm all set and I can just sit and sew when I put whatever part, like whatever flower I'm working on. And what I am working on is your typical beginner English paper piecing, which is hexagons and hexagon flowers. So I have um, just variety of flowers, a lot of purples and reds and yellows um, a lot of sc scraps, I've, yeah, just some really pretty ones. Um, some of them are really bright and some of them are less bright. So anyway, this project was a so long and I wanted, this project has been going on for a long time. It's at least five years old, if not older. Um, and the sew along was, it was called the Kingfisher sew along. It was with Stitched in Color, um, Rachel Hauser at Stitched in Color. And it was a very long time ago that this was. I, and I'm just still working on the flowers and I have, I want to say I'm about halfway done with the flowers. And um, the idea with this English paper piecing project is that these then are appliqued, these flowers. Oh, this one, this one's really pretty. I really like this one. Um, I like the center of that one a lot. but. Uh, these flowers are then appliqued onto a block that that is then machine sewn into a quilt, um, and you can machine at twelve. That's the final. Starts in fifteen minutes. My husband's calendar is announced. My husband Bo, his calendar is announced on um, our Alexa device because that's convenient for everyone in our family. Um, anyway, I. Yeah, so these will be machine appliqued onto a block that then will be machine sewn together to kind of make a English paper piecing quilt that's not all by hand was the theory. And the, the pieces they're appliqued onto weren't gonna just be squares, they were gonna be diamonds. Um, I don't know that I'm 100% gonna follow through with the whole design of the Kingfisher, but I am gonna, my plan is to applique it onto uh, whatever and then make a quilt. Um, but yeah, once I finish the flowers, then I'll figure out my background and I'm only like halfway there. So anyway, this is my other like ongoing hand sewing project that I do really enjoy. And I have all sorts of supplies in here, like my hexagon puncher. And I um, sorted, I've already sorted out all of my flower fabrics. Like I've already picked them off and I have them, I have these like envelopes that I just cut in half. I sealed and cut in half and then I have my squares already somewhat cut down 
in these. Um, and you can, I don't know if you can even see the colors or not, but there's just purples and reds and yellows and oranges. Uh, I, my original color pick, I actually looked down to some seed packets I had and got crayons out and it's probably on my Instagram actually. Um, so anyway, that's my other like hand sewing project that's on the go with my yo-yos. My other projects over here that I really need to find a better place for because I don't want them stored in my sewing corner. I have some crochet projects going. I, um, yeah, I, I have a couple different crocheters I like to follow online. Um, and I don't really crochet anything super complicated because for me, crocheting is about relaxing and not having to think. Um, but one thing I have going on is I have this bag that I sewed years ago, which was also an English paper. My first English paper piecing project actually was this, just these pentagons, um, for a color wheel project. But, um, I'm working on a wearable, which I have never really done out of crochet because I'll be honest, I crochet, but I don't prefer the fabric that crochet makes. <laughs> I prefer the fabric knit makes, which is why I, um, have recently actually finished my first Tunisian crochet project because I, I like the results, like how the fabric of Tunisian crochet looks better, but I am not patient enough. It looks more like knitting, but I am not, I know the basics of knitting, but I'm, I like how easy crochet is when you mess up <laughs> versus knitting. For me, knitting is a lot more complicated if you mess up, if you drop your stitches, if whatever happens, like I, it, boggles my mind what to do. Whereas with crochet, you have one live stitch at any given time and that's it for the most part. I guess Tunisian crochet is a little different, but, um, and that for me is really reassuring. I feel very secure with that. And I also feel very secure with, if I see a mistake, I know how to fix it. I just have to rip out everything and fix it. Um, anyway, I'm making a hexagon cardigan. So the idea is you make two uh, large hexagon granny squares, which is a simple enough thing like really fun. Um, and then, oops, I just ripped out some stitches. But like I said, it's not super big deal in crochet. I 100% know how to fix that. Um, but then the idea is you're gonna put it together. Let me find the right way to put it together. Yes, like this. And so you can see it looks like the half of a baby doll <laughs> or a small child uh, cardigan. And you would join it across the top and back and make it a neck hole. And you have, cause you have two of these, one for this side, one for that side. and. So anyway, I'm making this essentially out of scrap yarn I have. I just, I have a lot of yarn, just cheap uh, worsted weight acrylic yarn. And so I'm trying it out to see if I like it. And if I do like it, in here I have yarn I have picked up that's kind of interesting um, years ago because I am a hoarder of craft supplies. Um, it's Dream Maker by Lion Brand. And it is a... Uh, it is also acrylic, but it and it's also but it's nylon as well, and it is a different type of make. It is um, like a cord almost versus yarn, where it has different things. It's like a cord, a t-shirt or something even. I don't know. I like it a lot. It's cute. It's cute colors. So if I end up liking this and think that this is a fun cardigan, then I will make it out of that. But that's kind of one of my on-the-go crocheting projects. This is the other half that I've got the blue done, but now I need just, once I finish the purple on this side, then I'll do the purple on that side. So anyway, um, that's one of my crochet projects that I really just need to find a different place for because it's taking up a lot of space in my pretty tiny sewing corner. And then the other ongoing project um, that I have is I've been doing this for a really long time, actually, for the last couple of years, probably since the beginning of the pandemic. I, I called it like my stress crocheting project. Um, and it is these, I don't think I have a completed one in here, but uh, they're f these fun little, I saw on, I saw it, I don't know, on Pinterest on uh, YouTube. It's a fun way to use up really tiny scraps. And so they're just like these little tiny cuffs. They're crocheted bracelets, essentially, just a simple double crochet. Um, and I use uh, scraps of yarn and I have a whole bunch of, I don't have any with buttons on them. But I have a whole bunch of really fun buttons that I've collected, like really so many buttons um, that are just 
mainly silly and stuff. And so it's a really fun way to use up, especially my more colorful yarn. And then I donated them to the school for like kid prize boxes. Um, I give them out to kids at church. Like I, it's just an ongoing thing. And I have like this huge bag of stuff that I just, this is like all the supplies I need specifically. And then I have like all sorts. Oh, here's one that's done. Like with the butterfly on it. I don't know if you can see that at all. Um, I don't know how to light anything because I'm not that good at it. But this has a butterfly button on it and it's cute. Um, anyway, but I just, it's like smaller scraps that aren't really enough to make anything else. Um, and that's what I've been making out of those scraps or some of like the crazy colorful stuff. Like, you know, if I see a crazy neon skein of acrylic yarn at the thrift store, I might pick it up for this project <laughs> because kids love bright colors and it's an ongoing thing. Um, and so I have these two large bags sitting in this area that are crochet projects that I just need to find a better place for as well. So I have my two hand sewing projects, I have my two crochet projects. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just have too many projects. That, and those aren't even like my main sewing projects, right? Um, there is a huge pile of freshly washed flannel here. I just found my flannel bin and I decided, I'm okay, I'm gonna wash it all. And right now I'm thinking it's always nice to have a um, super simple sewing project to get you going um, on tougher sewing projects, right? So this super simple sewing project is all about um, using up all of my flannel that I should not even have because why do I need so much flannel? Um, and making dishcloths and washcloths. We use them, I like we always wear them out. Um, and maybe some handkerchiefs as well, because I like to have that instead of having to use a tissue all the time if my nose is just a little drippy, you know? Um, and then too, I can give some away and just, I, was, I just figured I would just make up a whole bunch and uh, it's just simple, two pieces of flannel um, sewn together. And then I just usually sew through the center in an X to make it stay together better. Um, I make dish towels and uh, dish cloths um, to wipe with too. So that's kind of like an ongoing plan with this immense amount of different types of flannel. Some of it is very baby, but I've decided, oh well, I'm still just gonna do that because I'm at a stage of life where I'm not gonna have more babies. Most of my friends aren't having babies. Um, there's, I'm nowhere close to like having grandbabies. So I'm just gonna do this and uh, get rid of all this flannel. And then if I need flannel later, I'll buy it instead of trying to hoard all of this flannel for 30 years. Um, and this is even, this is even all of it that's clean. And this isn't even all of it that I have to wash. Um, anyway, so that's a project that I need to like fold and just organize that. So it's an easy thing just to pull out and do a couple, get my sewing going before I move on to whatever else I want to do. Um, so also back in this corner, well, I have, this is a large flannel sheet that is just cream um, that I picked up secondhand because I am a sucker for thrift shopping and I go to the Goodwill outlet, which is also known as the bins in this area where um, things are to be purchased by the pound um, and stuff like this is super cheap and it's often overlooked and um, sometimes I might have a couple spots, but that doesn't really bother me. But anyway, with this, I was planning eventually on making a design wall once my um, sewing camper, sewing studio camper, craft camper, I don't know, whatever is done. Um, but yeah, does it need to be sitting over here right now? No. Oh, do I know what to do with it? No. Uh, anyway, but the other thing is I have this ongoing vision of, uh, also at the Goodwill outlet, I picked up this wool coat that definitely is no longer a size 14. Um, and yeah, it's a wool and nylon coat. Um, and I was going to embellish it. And I have this vision of, cause I also picked up this pretty scarf um, that has these really pretty uh, pinks and blues um, in it. And I was gonna use this 
to make kind of like an organic flower of some sort. Um, and I was gonna back it with this, those flowers since the scarf is see-through, I was gonna back with, found a really pretty light blue sheet. Um, also at the outlet. So I was gonna make those flowers. I was thinking about this batik that I got for free actually. Um, I picked it up, yeah, I got for free somewhere as the center of the flowers. It's a really pretty blue batik with some greens and light blues. And uh, I'm thinking, I just have a vision of these organic flowers to make um, and then embellish this coat with, along with, I, I kind of collected some other things to play with to put on that coat, including I have some blue lace that could be pretty. I also have a lot of purple in here because I was originally thinking purple. Hence the purple yo-yos, um, but I've since switched my mind. But I do have some dark purple yarn. I have some purple lace. Um, I also have this really pretty blue. I don't know. I have some different things I was thinking about playing with. Oh, yeah, and I have this blue lace. I've forgotten about this one. Well, there's so much. I have so much stuff I've forgotten about. But um, and this is also really pretty blue lace. Anyway, so that's that project, um, and I, it is in no way organized. You can see it's just like this pile of junk that's been sitting on the floor, um, and I don't even know the best way to organize it. No clue um, at all. I, I really should, I do have it, I have it the next thing on my list after finishing that shirt. So, um, and with the flannel, this is a not, the flannel is an ongoing situation, but, so I do have it kind of prioritized, but the one thing about this project, especially like versus the flannel or the buttons, um, is it's going to take a lot of brain energy, like a lot of creative energy, so it isn't something I want to rush into, but I do need to just start playing, and that'll probably get some of my creative juices going, I guess, um, but that is a project, yeah. Um, I also have just things here that need to, that I need to store or, uh, um, linens that I have the intention of upcycling. This is one of my all time favorite duvet covers we ever had. However, the top has now completely, um, ripped out. Like it's not just the seam is ripped out, but the fabric itself is worn down to the point that it completely ripped out almost all the way across the top. Um, so I was just thinking about how to use this fabric because I love it. It's this really pretty green color. It's um, it's one of those fabrics that's woven with two different colors of thread to create the color, which I love. It's always a really fun effect. Um, and then it's this really pretty teal. So this green and this teal and I love it and I don't know what to do with it. Um, there's a lot of things I could do, but uh, yeah. And speaking of uh, fabrics to upcycle, this is another one I picked up at the Goodwill outlet. It's seriously faded, but it has some really pretty colors. It's just, was clear, it looks like it was left in someone's window or something. Um, and it has huge fade spots and fade lines. And, but it's a really pretty textile. I was thinking about ripping this up and making some fabric yarn with this. Um, and maybe I'll do that with the duvet as well. The only thing is I don't actually like crocheting with fabric yarn. I just really like making it. So I might do that and then gift it to my friend who crochets um, for her to make a rag rug. Or I was thinking about, I don't know, I have an idea of maybe trying to weave a rug, which seems like a bad idea to take on another uh, form of crafting. But um, yeah, but that's also what keeps, I don't know, it's also what's fun about all of this. Um, and I was just thinking, I turned 40 about two months ago um, and maybe I should celebrate turning 40 this year by, like, it's just good for your brain to always learn new things, right? And so I was thinking maybe I should learn some new crafts in celebration of turning 40. Um, but maybe I should also just really enjoy the crafts I've already learned, um, because I only have so much time. <laughs> so, uh, since I work and have kids and family and so I don't know. Anyway, so th that's two like things to be upcycled or turned into other things. Um, yeah. So I guess.
guess those are all of the really obvious projects I have around me. I, um, there's always a lot of other things too. Like I, I have to do lists of a variety of things that don't even have to do with crafting, right? Like I set up all sorts of doctor's appointments today that needed to be done. And, um, yeah, I need to do some other things, but, uh, Let's see if I remembered anything. Oh, there what? There are two other projects I kind of was thinking about too that I, I will um, show just for fun. I have this huge. I really yeah. I have this gigantic Ziploc bag. I don't know. This is the jumbo, the two down size, and inside I have several other Ziploc bags um, because I another like ongoing project where I don't have to think a lot, but it can still be really fun and creative is I have these out of my scraps I keep a collection of two inch squares sometimes I cut them rotary sometimes I actually have a little cardboard template in here that um I use to trace and cut them out because I'm not too particular about it but anyway I I love four patches I I love simple quilting and patchwork and so I just have a collection of fun um uh, four or four patches here that I make and I usually I'll sit and I'll make like five or ten more four patches and then I'll put four of them together so some of these I really love um yeah like let me find one that I really love where's my favorite one Oh yeah, this is my favorite one. Um, and I and I am trying to kind of keep, I don't know, like some continuity between them, but it's kind of a loose thing. There's one I really like. Uh, here's one that is polka dots and teal down the center. Really like that one. Um, and some of them are a little crazier than others too. Uh, it's just, Fun to put these together and eventually I'll put these together and maybe make a quilt or maybe I'll make something else I don't know I just I've just kind of been collecting these squares as my ongoing kind of scrap project and like get in the mood to sew project that I really could spend an hour or so on and really enjoy still um, uh, and it's just fun to keep adding more scraps in so this is like the collection of squares that I already have going um, and then in my other bag in here, I have like some of the scraps that I specifically have like earmarked for to put towards and cut some squares if I feel like doing that. And normally when I get this project out, I do a little bit of all parts of that process. And that's really fun. For me. So that's kind of a fun quilting or patchwork project I have going on. Because not all my patchwork ever turns into quilts. Because um, I enjoy it turning patchwork into other things too. Mainly I really enjoy bag making, um, which is also one of my ongoing projects that I have is I have a bin over here full of things I use to make simple totes, usually out of denim with a simple, sometimes patchwork, pochic, patchwork pocket in front. Um, the other project though I was thinking about getting out that I haven't gotten out for a super, super long time. Um, and it would be a hand sewing project and things may add an inch out of here. We'll find out. So far, so good. Um, stuffing. Uh, this is, I don't know what that is. Yarn now, so I'll put it with my crochet stuff. Um, I have this, don't have lunch, stay up there, stay up there. Oh dear. Okay. Those are all the pieces and tools for this project. But um, it's been in the works for many years now. I have a hand quilting project <laughs> that I keep shoving away uh, where I improv quilted or in I used, um, I was inspired by Sherry Lynn Woods improv patchwork and I made um, this large string or with strings made this and I love this quilt. I love the colors in this quilt getting it out again. Feels really nice. And so I have, I began hand quilting it 
and it, I just am outlining these little squares, but I also have been tying some of them. It's kind of random. I'm, it's like these, this tie here and here, and there's another spot down here that I tied instead of quilting. But anyway, it's all hand work. So I wanted to give a go at hand quilting and, um, and tried out some different things in regards to that to see what I like and don't like. And so, and yeah, I've learned a lot and I am inspired to kind of pick it up and try some other things again. And so maybe eventually someday I will finish this. It has a, um, it has a really pretty old sheet on the back. It's this like floral purple and brown and pretty sheet. It's really soft, it's almost like a velveteen finish. Um, but it's, it's probably the biggest quilt I've ever made. Um, and so of course it's the one I decided, oh, let me hand quilt this one. <laughs> so anyway, that is another uh, sewing project or quilting project um, that I've been thinking about and would like to finish and maybe even use because yeah, I really love this quilt. It's not perfect, but that's kind of the fun of uh, ruler-free improv patchwork which I really enjoy. So anyway, so there it is. Oh, and the things that I'm quilting it with, like all of these tools, a lot of which were gathered um, secondhand. Oh, this, there's my beeswax, because I'm always looking for that, my little beeswax uh, for other projects. But, um, and I do have a couple different frames I've tried with this. And that's something I'm wanting to experiment with is, is not using a frame because I just find it really cumbersome to get that out and set up and then sew. But then it is nice to have the tension. So I don't know. There are things I'm thinking about. But anyway, I have um, I have some what I believe is pearl cotton. Yeah, it is pearl cotton. But the question is what type here? It's like Lizbeth. Picked it up clearance somewhere, but it's purple. Um, I have some Gooderman uh, cotton purple variegated thread that this is just, it doesn't have a size on it. Um, oh, it says 50. So this is not necessarily uh, as thick as what other people would use for quilting, but this is thicker. Uh, this is, like I said, this is more of like a pearl cotton thickness, but I can still thread it in, which is good. Um, yeah, and I have some different things here and thimbles and the safety pins for that. So that's an ongoing thing. Oh, and my, one of my good snips is in there. I have two pairs of snips in there. Should I have two pairs in there? Probably not. Um, I should probably just pick one and leave one in there, which even that is probably crazy to some people. There's snips in here. There's a pair of scissors in with my English paper piecing. Um, there's snips in my crochet, uh, bracelet thing. Uh, those scissors though are just like kid scissors for yarn you don't need to sharpen scissors so anyway I obviously have too many um projects and supplies for those so I don't know I'm feeling inspired at least about my quilt um on this list and some of the other things too so hopefully sharing all of these fun things with you uh was fun for you guys and it also has been fun for me to chat a little bit um and so yeah, I'm thinking I'll make more of these just chatty videos in the future. Maybe if I sit and work on my quilt um, or try to do sewing, I'm because I want to make videos, but I making a tutorial video is a little bit more stressful. I'm finding I filmed a whole tutorial video and then found I filmed it in different orientations. So for me, that's really stressful. And I think this will be easier to edit and I'm just more chit chatty and maybe a way to connect so anyway if you've watched this long thank you very much for watching and uh who knows when i'll be back but maybe i'll try to do this weekly so and i can maybe show progress on some of these things or what i've made recently um because i have made some things too like i made in january i made myself a charm pack tote this is a uh, uh, kathy holden uh gypsy soul i want to say it's a very very bright line which I picked specifically because I wanted, I knew in January I'd want to sew with cheerful fabrics. And I really love it. It's like little embroidered and crocheted and cross-stitched motifs. Um, 
and so and I always love a bag and so this is my main bag right now for my purse and stuff and then this one I did I made a drawstring uh, insert or I made it so I can close it up drawstring style which is kind of fun a new skill for me um, and I saw it on a video and maybe I'll link it maybe I won't maybe I'll probably link some of these things maybe the Kingfisher's so long uh, maybe the hexagon cardi but I'm not really going off a specific tutorial I kind of just looked at a lot of things and like oh, I'll go for it um, and then maybe that Sherry Lynn would uh, video that inspired this I would love to link because it was just a good time and I really appreciate her approach to sewing not just as a get her done but as a contemplative practice so anyway thank you for watching and uh, maybe I'll see you next time